We're live now, Chair Little. Thank you, Coordinator Van Alstyne, and um, welcome subcommittee members. This is a meeting of the Sign Bylaw Subcommittee uh, on Tuesday, May 24th, and we're resuming the meeting that we recessed on May the 10th. And um, actually, before we resume, I just have a question for Co Coordinator Van Alstyne. Um, there were some draft minutes sent around um, just, I think, to remind us what we had decided on May the 10th. And I noticed um, a few omissions. And I'm wondering, coordinator, if we should address those now, would it be appropriate to address those now? Or um, what would you suggest? Um, through you, Chair, if there are things that were missed um, in those minutes, definitely because those minutes uh, will be continued today. Um, so if there was a decision made or consensus on something that I missed, then absolutely we should discuss it. All right. Um, thank you for that. I do have a few things that I think we decided, and I think it I, I believe it's important that we capture those. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else has anything to, to suggest before I go into um, what I noticed. Councillor Allen or Councillor Nielsen, is there anything that you have? Nothing here. Okay. Um, all right, so um, under draft sign bylaw discussion, it, um, the second bullet point is safety and liability focus. <clears throat> I did go back and review um, the video just to make sure that my memory was correct. And um, I believe that we agreed um, to take the safety and liability focus, but also to um, consider nuisance and aesthetics as two separate categories. Um, not that they would necessarily be included, but that we would be looking at, um, remember we had the discussion around aesthetic, aesthetics being a broad term and we were looking at perhaps making that more discreet and looking at nuisance um, items also. So um, does that mesh with your memory of our discussion? Councillor Nielsen? When we discussed, because I went back and I've watched both the meetings we've already had, so I could for one catch up with you guys. When we discussed the matrix, my understanding was that we were going to use the safety and liability lens to go through it. Mm -hmm. The I understood it as the liability and aesthetics would be a separate conversation to have. Sorry, not liability, sorry, aesthetics and nuisance would be a separate conversation to have after delving through the bylaw with the safety and liability. So that's where I do have some comments to make about the previous thing, but we'll finish with what you brought up. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember quite how you've put it, that, that they're all part of the same one. Yeah, I was just being a little bit more discerning around the, the subtitle of aesthetics that um, nuisance considerations don't fall into uh, matters of taste. So. I don't think I'm uh, disagreeing with your interpretation, Councillor Nielsen. We did have that discussion and I just, um, maybe it could just include that there be consideration for nuisance items and aesthetic items. Because um, like we talked about, some things may be going back to the public because we won't find consensus. You're not, I'm going to go to Councillor uh, Councillor Allen. Um, thank you. Yes, uh, I agree that we did. We were we decided to go through it with the safety and liability focus, as as Councillor Nielsen said. I think because we couldn't come up with terminology for the aesthetics and the nuisance that it, we we were we are going to to discuss it, but that was later on. So mm -hmm. I think if we just have another bullet point in there that um, uh, 
nuisance and, and aesthetics would be considered. Okay. We'd just do that at the end. That was my understanding. Mm -hmm. it, it, it shouldn't nuisance and well, nuisance maybe, but aesthetics isn't going to determine where we want certain signs. It's, it's on those signs, what do we want to, or do we want to restrict anything? Right. So, all right. Uh, okay. All right. So are you all right then with that, Councillor Nielsen, that we add another bullet point that there would be some consideration uh, given to, um, to nuisance and aesthetic or yeah, consider nuisance and aesthetic items? From the minutes saying that there was a discussion was part of that, I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, then there were the three clauses that Councillor Allen brought up, which are captured there. Um, and we did have, I think it should be noted that we had agreement on the first and that we did not have uh, consensus on the second or the third. I think that should be noted in the minutes because we did discuss them. We also um, talked about the methodology and we did have agreement on this as well and it wasn't captured, which was, um, there will be things in this bylaw that we have consensus on whether they should be included or excluded. We, we all agree. And I think those things should be noted. And the other things that we don't agree on don't have consensus. Um, those are things that we discussed perhaps um, including in some way in what we take back to the public for public comment, also for council members comment on those things where we don't have consensus. Is that, does that mesh with your memory of what we talked about? And are you all right with including that way of proceeding the methodology into these minutes? From my understanding of the, of the rewatching the video that that was the premise, yes. Okay, Councillor Allen? Yeah, I thought I read that somewhere, but it's not it's not in these minutes, but then uh, Councillor Little's notes. I think it was my okay. notes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it could be some broad, you know, well, I don't want to get into all that, but let's just uh, move on. So those were my only points. Um, I just thought they should be captured because we did have discussion and we did either agree or uh, did not agree, but um, we did discuss it. So we are, we as, as uh, coordinator Van Alstein has noted, we did get down to, um, after you left Councillor Nielsen, Councillor Allen and I stayed on and we got as far as projecting signs and we were having a discussion, which isn't captured here. Um, but when I look back at the recording, we thought that there was a, a safety aspect to the projecting signs um, that should be um, either the building department involved to make sure that those signs are secured safely this was the discussion anyway, um, and probably requiring a permit because um, they are extending out over uh, public space. Is that how you remember it, Councillor Allen? Um, yes, but uh, did we finish that one, projecting sign? I don't know that we... I don't know. We had discussion, but we did not... Um, we both agreed that um, there was definitely a safety element to this because it hangs out over a public right of way. Um, right. And so Which how how that safety element is ensured, you know, is by permit or by, you know, a building permit specifically, I don't think we, we came to any conclusion there. And that ties in with my first um under the clauses to consider um, that nothing will project over municipal property unless um, 
explicitly outlined in this bylaw. So if we decide that, yes, we will allow projecting signs, but here is the criteria, you know, they have to be a permit and, you know, whether we have a engineer or whatever, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, Councillor Nielsen, any comment? So, I spent the last week trying to watch the videos, catch up with what was just being discussed. I have a, uh, before we continue, I have a, qu a question for the two of you. The bylaw that we're reviewing and going through fundamentally was not supported at council. We have not made any significant changes to it. I'm confused by the conversation that continued. I, my understanding was we were going to look at the matrix with risk and liability as being the fundamental premise and that we both agreed or the three of us agreed that was the, the main priority of the subcommittee. Currently, it feels like we haven't made any substantial changes to this document Anytime we try to have a disagreement and conversation, the premise is we'll put it to the public. This bylaw, we spent 14 hours communicating at Community of the Whole, going through this bylaw, and then it went to council, and the premise of the vote was that it wasn't even supported to go to the public. And we're sitting here having conversations about the same rationale and layout of this bylaw, and I don't understand what the objective is, because to me, if council hasn't supported it and we're not making a fundamental change to the way this bylaw is written, what are we doing? Because if it's going to go back to council, is it going to pass again? I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm here with the open mind that we need to focus on risk and liability. And I know philosophically, I differ greatly from yourself, Councillor Little, and probably greatly from Councillor Allen. But every time I've tried to bring up concerns I have with the way things are being brought up or said, the consensus is we don't have consensus, we're gonna to go to the public. So council gave a direction that we're not gonna support this file and send it to the public. Is this committee's objective to make minor changes and still send this to the public? Well, I can answer that, um, but I feel as the chair, I should not... Uh... I think in this moment, Kathy, you and I are the most diametrically opposed. I need to understand what your objective here is, because apparently it is not the same as mine, and I don't understand what we're doing. Okay, the vision I have, Councillor Nielsen, is that we do exactly what you're suggesting, that we go through and that we identify what are the, in, in the regulations of the current bylaw, what, where we can find the most agreement is with the safety and liability focus. So that I think we can find consensus on. Hopefully we can find some consensus on um, where these signs would be allowed as well. So I'm thinking that that would be something that we could agree to that would go back to, that would go to the public, that would go back to council that would be substantially different from, you know, the, the sign bylaw that came before us. What I'm seeing as far as, um, I'm not suggesting that we take all the parts that we don't agree on back to the public. What I'm suggesting is that we survey the public more broadly about what their, what their opinions on with respect to, say we can't get agreement on setbacks say those aren't included because they're not safety and liability. Then my, my suggestion would be we go to the public and ask, should there be setbacks? In what zones should there be setbacks? As far as what we're calling aesthetics and what you refer to as can't legislate or regulate taste, um, a lot of the sign by bylaws we look at do have a lot of um, rec regulations around size, you know, location, number, duration of time they can be up, all those sorts of things. But if we can't find consensus, then I think there can be a broad question 
phrased in a way to see what the public supports as far as regulating those kinds of things. I think about um, some of the signage that has caused you know, consternation to people living in the area where signage is going up because we don't have a sign bylaw. And, and sometimes it's you know, exactly those things about the rural community, what's pleasing, what matches the rural community. I understand and I think we're going to get nowhere if we try at this subcommittee level or even at council level to, you know, to, to hash that out and try and find where we agree. What I'm suggesting is the focus is safety and liability, like you said. You know, we refine this bylaw to the point that we can bring back something that we can support and we then we present broad questions about um, things like nuisance items and visual appeal, rural, you know, the rural feel of a community. Those are things that even if we do go back to the public, I don't think this council is going to have time to develop, but we will have some understanding whether to proceed or whether to just leave it as is. Does that make sense? So we had this council has a billboard bylaw in place that was edited because of the signs that caused the start of the conversation with this, how we got to where we are. We, I, I look at the path we're taking. I understand. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be, um, I'm trying not to be as stubborn as I feel like philosophically I am. Philosophically, I don't think this municipality needs a 43 page sign bylaw, but I am trying to be open to the understanding of finding common ground and finding what the municipality needs because of lawyers and insurance companies. I do understand that the seven of us will, will never find full consensus on this item because of the nature of a sign bylaw and the fact that it is different of opinions that vary greatly over how this works. So I understand we need to go to the public. What I don't understand is that we are using the same methodology that didn't carry through council. So if we don't, I'll put it to you this way. We have a 43 page sign bylaw that has all the elements where is it going to go? What zone is it appropriate in? What kind of sign setbacks we want to have? What does the sign um, shape? You know, what's it, what's the access of the sign? What's not an excess of sign in terms of size and scale? The, the bylaws it states now has all these principles. And because it's 43 pages, there was comments that wasn't just from myself and why the bylaw eventually did not pass at council was because it was considered to be overreaching and, and, not digestible from the community. I understand that we can find signed bylaws all over the place that match the same characteristics of what we have. I would argue that if I was at those tables, I'd be seeing the same thing I'm saying here. What I don't understand is that if we don't look at this bylaw differently, what are we expecting to pass at the council table when the council table didn't pass this one? So we're talking about finding agreements on whether or not a sign should be, a banner sign should be allowed in a neighborhood or not, right? I keep saying, it's not the sign, it's the situation. So I understand saying we can have setbacks. Let's say we don't want it close to the municipal property, but I can argue and say, why can't you have a banner in a rural situation or in a neighborhood situation means I can't put up a banner that says happy anniversary on the outside of my house to greet my wife when she comes home. Because theoretically, that would be against the bylaw. We're gonna talk about projecting signs. Look around the municipality and drive around. A projection sign that hangs off of a, of a structure and swings in the wind, like we're gonna talk about, is how most people put up a family sign on their house. And we're gonna say projecting signs aren't allowed in neighborhoods. Why? It is not the sign that's the issue. It is the situation. And I keep saying this, and I keep banging my head against the wall, which is why I'm getting more and more frustrated, but I am trying to be willing to work with this committee and willing to work with the idea that the problem is municipal property, municipal liability. 
if we can start there and find agreement, then I think something can pass. But I will be honest and frank. I am frustrated with the fact that I try to bring that up and it keeps getting looked over and we keep trying to go back to, is it a nuisance thing? Is it a, an aesthetics thing? What's the definitions we're going to have? I'm going to do the same thing I did before and fundamentally try to crush the sign bylaw when it comes to council because I don't believe this is what we need. So I'm confused as to why we're carrying down a path that isn't going to change the way we are structuring the sign bylaw. And we are trying to say, all these other municipalities have this type of a sign bylaw, Gray Highlands can have it too. And I'll keep saying, Mulmer has one that specifically says rural minis or municipal properties and lands, and that's the lens they're going with, but I keep saying told, here's 50 that go this way. Most of those places are large urban centers that have signed bylaws in place because the predominancy of the municipality is urban centers. Gray Highlands is a mix. We are not predominantly urban centers. We are predominantly rural. And I don't understand why we're saying you can't have a sign everywhere. And I first spent the last week debating in my head how to be polite and how to be open to considerations when I keep sitting here looking at it going, we are not accomplishing anything. We are going to sit here and send the same thing back to council where we already did spend 14 hours on. So why are we wasting our time and spinning our wheels? Thank you for that. Answer I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm partially in agreement with Councillor Nielsen. This, we've had a couple of weeks since our last meeting and you start thinking about or talking about what decisions or suggestions we're going to make. And then a scenario comes up that you realize, hmm, how does that affect that? And did we make the right decision? I'm, I'm wondering, uh, safety and liability, that should be a decision of council only. We do not go to the public, and I'm not suggesting that we are saying we would, but we do not go to the public for that. That's, that's a council staff decision. And the aesthetics and nuisance we're talking about perhaps going to the public on, on that. My concern is that with a lot of public meetings, whether it's planning, you don't get people that come onto the meeting and say, oh yes, I like where that C4 is going, or I like you know, where a gas station is going. You only get people that, that are voicing negative comments and so our, if we go to the public, are we only going to get people that, that want a banner sign or a, a projecting sign in their residential area, which is then going to skew the comments. And if we decide not to go with what the public says, it's you know, kind of the same old thing. Well, they had a public meeting, but they didn't listen to me. And so perhaps we need to be just concerned with safety and liability only. And, and that is the premise of the Mulmer um, bylaw. Um, it, it, if it affects safety and liability on municipal property, then we need to have some rules in place. If somebody wants to put a projecting sign up on their house or their barn or business out in the country where it isn't affecting the municipality, so be it. But I still have that, the aesthetics part. We don't want ugly, I know there's ugly barns and there's ugly houses and there's ugly all sorts of things and we can't we can't do anything about that but I'll I'll, I'll go back to the trucks you see drive by with a flag making comments about our prime minister would anybody want one of those signs on 
I have a mobile sign on one of my businesses, like a, a changeable letter sign. If there's no, if there's no restrictions, I could put one of those sayings on that sign and nobody could do anything about it. And I just cannot agree to that. Um, especially if it's, well, how many cars went by that sign this past weekend? 5,000, 10,000 with little kids with, you know, so that, that is definitely going to be the hard part. Safety and liability, I think we can probably uh, agree on what is safe and what's going to cause some liability issues for the municipality. It is going to be the aesthetics and, and nuisance that, that's going to be the problem. So, and I know that is what we're doing now. We're going through and looking at it from a safety and liability issue. But as Councillor Nielsen said, a banner sign, which where did we um, allow an ag in rural? Why can't it go somewhere else? It's not, it isn't a safety issue. And so I don't know if we're taking two steps forward and well, the sayings one step back, but I almost wonder if we're taking three steps back. So anyways, I'll leave it at that. Just to, just a comment there about the banner signs. Um, we said add ag and rural um, at our last meeting, but they are permitted in the other designations. So we were just expanding that. It's not okay. that we're saying only ag and rural. Right. Um, okay. Councillor Nielsen. <laughs> oh, sorry. Councillor Nielsen. I understand the difference in philosophies about the aesthetics and regulations. I keep trying to say that's why we need to have, I, I don't know if it's, if I sound redundant or not, because a bylaw that is a signed bylaw for the entire municipality, in my eyes, needs to focus down on what is the need. The municipality needs to protect itself. Then, we have members of the public, members of council that want regulation in specific areas because of specific signs that they don't like, be it whatever reasons, be it that it's a nuisance, be it that it doesn't takes away from our aesthetics of the rural landscape because you have 500 billboards. I understand that. But in my understanding of trying to accomplish and actually, like I, like I said, Chair Little, I am trying to meet this committee on middle ground. I am trying to be open to considerations. I don't think you need to have a bylaw that goes across the whole municipality that says, here's your regulations. I think you can have the specifics. And I understand that there's bylaws that are written that have those specific zoning sections within the bylaw, but I find that that will be confusing and frustrating and hard to understand what is the objective. If we say across the entire municipality, these, this premise, these words are, if it comes near our property, you gotta, get our, you gotta get some approval because liability and risk tell us that's what we need. Then we have Markdale section, then you have a Flusherton section, then you have, you know, that becomes easier to read through headings, that becomes easier to understand for the public that we are talking about specific areas because I still would sit here and say, if you have regulations in terms of sign style or not just style, but saying Markdale, we don't wanna have poster signs because the buildings are tighter connected, but on Flusherton, there's not as many buildings in a row or Maxwell, there's more space between the buildings or Feversham, there's more space between the buildings. But we're saying in commercial zones, you can only do this type of thing or these aren't allowed. Why are we attacking all commercial zones of the same lens and not being specific to the regions? Because Grey Highlands isn't one giant city. Grey Highlands is a combination of a lot of different um, villages and hamlets that have been put together through amalgamation. But those villages and hamlets still have their uniqueness to them. This is where I think that is a fundamental shift on how the bylaw is being presented that would make sense to come back to council. If we stick with the way this bylaw is written, 
there's, and there's no fundamental change to it, then I don't see how it gets carried through better than we just did months ago when we brought it the first time. Well, it wasn't my intent to uh, sit through, you know, half a dozen more meetings and spend, you know, hours and hours and hours of my own time on this project to come up with something that's exactly the same that council rejected in the past. That's not my intention. Your perspective is one, Councillor Nielsen, and I, and I do hear you, I hear your frustration. I am sympathetic. I want, basically, I want this committee to be able to, like I said at the end of last meeting, um, when you weren't there, that we can come up with something that we will all feel like we're proud of, that we've done this work, that we've come up with something that we think will meet the needs of the municipality, that council will be able to support, and then the public will find um, much more palatable than the previous bylaw. So we're not on different pages when it comes to that, Councillor Nielsen. Um, and I thought, you know, I was optimistic really about this committee because like you say, you and I are probably far apart in our opinion, but I, I thought with the three of us, um, you know, that we would be able to find where the common ground is. And that's really all I'm looking for is the common ground. If you prefer, and this was kind of my thought that everything that we don't agree on, um, I was setting aside to, um, because we don't agree, that then we need to go to the broader community. If you prefer, we can leave that aside. Um, this is, I'm just suggesting. We could leave that aside and just focus on where's the common ground around this <laughs> screen and and go forward that way and and leave i don't know i think the nuisance item and also uh what councillor allen was saying you know the content of what's on on signs and the you know whether it's offensive or um malicious or you know it's it doesn't really present the kind of community we want to be. Um, you know, I think there's room for those things, but I'm certainly not unwilling to work with you, Councillor Nielsen. I, my goal here is to, for us, is to come up with something by the end of the, this uh, time that we have. I just hated to see um, all the work that was done on the last sign by law end up with nothing. So if we end up with something that's a quarter the size of that original sign by law that covers only safety and liability on municipal lands or you know um, private property that would affect municipal lands, then you know we've already decided that. And I don't see a, I don't see a problem with going through with that lens. It's just do we, maybe it's more, do I let go or what do we let go of? You know, um, you know, I'm prepared to let go of a lot. There's, there may be some things, you know, there's maybe some things that <clears throat> when we get into discussion, we can um, agree not to let go, but um, you know, Councillor Nielsen, I just, I feel like we are a team and we want to get want to get something done and so if that is only this much then then that's what we'll do so with the with the way things were going when i was listening to the conversation that took place and the way it was carried through after <clears throat> i had left the last meeting it was i feel like the the what frustrated me was that there wasn't changes coming to, coming to like if we're not changing it substantially then what are we doing that was my premise 
Council didn't support the, this bylaw as written. We're making very minor changes that took that a lot of which took place at the community of the whole. And then we weren't going further. A question for, I have a question of process for coordinator Van Alstein, if I may, and then a question for my fellow committee members. Coordinator Van Alstein, the mandate of this group is to look at the sign bylaw and make changes to go back to the community, right? Or is, is it specifically to go back to council? What my question is, is do the three of us have the authority to send questions to the public without having to go through council like we did on the internet task force and, and others? Councilor, or sorry, coordinator. Um, through you, Chair, the mandate of the committee is to re-examine the draft signed by law presented at the Committee of the Whole and Council from a larger context of the need and desirability for locally appropriate safety regulations or aesthetic guidelines and report back to Council with recommendations. So if we want to create a survey for the public, we have to make a motion here that goes back to Council for Council to approve to get out to the public. Um, yes, although without ha having read through the terms of reference recently, I would have to double check that individual recommendations can even go to council. Um, lately, the terms of reference have stated that the, all the recommendations to council are to come at the wrap up of the task force. Again, I haven't read through these ones recently. So without taking the time to do that, I can't tell you 100% whether or not you could put forward a recommendation like that at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Corey Minister. Because my my premise was going to be that perhaps the Beth methodology to get to those other points in a timely manner would be to go to the public sooner rather than later with broader questions that would be more like, um, do you would you like to see regulations for downtown Markdale about the types of signs that are allowed? Do you want to see regulations that would be, you know, specific as to size and location? Do we want to see, because I understand that I am pretty hardcore on this bylaw and it is, I've been trying my, to rack my brain on to how to compromise, like what you were just saying, Kathy, Councillor Little, sorry, that I know not everybody in this municipality thinks the same way I do. And I'm trying to think, is the Beth methodology to get the public's reaction? Is the public you know, frustrated with us that we're trying to create a bylaw? Is the public wanting the bylaw to be what we're looking at? If I'm wrong, I can, I can admit I'm wrong and still be angry about it, but I can, be, I can admit I'm wrong. It just, so if it sounds like if we can't, um, Oh, hang on. Sorry, we're getting a text and it doesn't look like it's in my favor. <laughs> On top of completion of the mandate. Councillor Nielsen, can I uh, just interject? You may, certainly. We have spent almost uh, three quarters of an hour on this discussion and I... I and <laughs> I think where we agree is to look at what are, what are the safety concerns, retain those, how they apply to those individual signs. If we're going through it, is there, we could look at designations and determine like, is there any reason like you're saying why it's restrictive? We can look at that. Um, I think that would at least give us some sense of accomplishment that we're working towards, you know, what the focus was originally. And I think what you're saying about going to the public, um, like I said, I'm willing to let that go at this point because that's just going to slow us down, I believe. There will be a lot of things that are kind of left out. And maybe when we go through and agree on what should be left in, if there's time, we can decide what we're going to do with what was left out. 
how we're going to approach that. It may just be a recommendation that, that goes through, you know, to counsel how to, what the next step should be. Um, but for, uh, I, you know, I want to make some progress here, just like you do. Um, we may not agree on the specifics, but I think we do agree on the general mandate, which is to come up with something that um, is going to work. And so um, I'll just leave it at that. I, I think we should proceed um, the best way we can, where we can find agreement, which was municipal property, municipal right-of-ways, um, public land um, that may be affected by private property signage and looking at it from the safety and liability aspect. I'm okay with that. Um, I just think we need to, uh, you know, we need to get moving on this. Uh, I'm just going to go to Councillor Allen and um, maybe we can wrap this discussion up and, and decide how we're going to uh, to uh, move forward in this meeting for the next um, hour and a bit. Councillor Allen. Hi, okay, thank you. Um, so sitting here, uh, I'm looking at the, the minutes from the last meeting and my three clauses that we are going to consider, I found those in other bylaws, signed bylaws, I just, you know, picked areas that I thought would probably have good sign bylaws. So why can't we just do that, do clauses? Because if we say we don't want any signs that are a distraction, so the ones that wave in the wind or the ones that you know, whatever they do, if we can agree that we don't want those, why do we need to go through and pick out um, animated sign and um, whatever other ones are in there that, that move? Why can't we just have a clause saying that anything that's a distraction to drivers or however we want to word it and forget about saying this sign is allowed here and this one's not if it's if it's safe and it doesn't cause a nuisance like a big billboard sign or a mobile sign on somebody's front yard in a residential area what can we do that just come up with some clauses that we kind of a blanket coverage of all the signs and if there are any that like the abandoned signs, we definitely say those aren't allowed and that can be another clause. Um, I think we can all agree that the residential areas are the main concern. If somebody wants a changeable letter sign out on 50 acres, why not? You know, or a, a, a big sign on the end of the barn, why not? as long as it's not offensive. And, and again, that's going to be the hard part. It, is it offensive? It, what's offensive to me may not be offensive to either one of you. So I, I, I do agree that this is going to, you know, this, this is going to be hard. Um, we aren't making much of a change from the changes that the committee of, a, of uh, the whole made. So are we just spinning our wheels by going through sign type by sign type? That's it. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Allen. I agree that, um, you know, looking through other sign bylaws, I think there are more principles outlined, you know, at the beginning of those bylaws that cover a lot of situations like you're describing, so it's not repetitive. I think when you go through the different um, regulations in this sign bylaw for specific signs, there is repetition. And, you know, perhaps that can be um, amalgamated to be one of those principles. So the scope, we talked about the scope, we agreed on the scope. We talk about safety and liability, um, you know, so what, 
we're probably concerned about those things at downtown intersections, sight lines and things like that. Um, I, I just don't know what the best way, like just to come up and lift clauses from other bylaws that we like, I, I'm not sure that's, um, <clears throat> it, it, isn't, it doesn't sound very comprehensive to me. We may be able to find like when we know what we want to include, we may be able to find good examples of what that language looks like. Um, but I think we talked about how this bylaw is structured and how it's presented to the public. And so, you know, I do agree that if we can find those principles that will broadly apply um, across the municipality, then um, that's probably a good idea. Noting maybe where there are exceptions, like that's a lot, a lot of what happens in some of these bylaws is this is not permitted except in these situations or whatever, you know, there's some specifics. <clears throat> My thought had been, and like I said, it was just a suggestion. Um, I put the, the, the schedules, permitted signs, signs that need a permit and highlighted in yellow. This is, these are all the safety. This is all relating to safety. What if we were to go through um, the easy one first, uh, the ones that don't require permits? What if we were to go through that schedule and look at all, what, all the safety items and leave those in um, I think when we do that, we're going to see what some generic principles are. Like this is the same, this is the same, this is, you know, it's the same, the same, the same. It's just over and over and over again. That could be one of our generic principles that we put at the beginning. So for example, if it were, um, you know, within, within a certain distance of the, the lights, you can't have such and such. And then we see that over and over. So that would be a generic principle under safety. That's like, we're, would you be willing to give that a try of going through the chart um, that has all the information on Schedule A, which is the easier one, with um, the regular the definitions there, the designations there, and the regulation is there. The safety part is highlighted. We go through that and say, okay, is this we want to keep this? Are there any common themes that we can include in the principles at the beginning? Would you be willing to try that on Schedule A? Um, and we'll and we'll see if we make any progress. Um, if it's working, then we can go to the more difficult section, which is the signs that do require permits. It, you know, I'm just trying to find the approach that's going to be. We've already sort of started down one path, and I think let's not give up on that path just yet. Um, anyway, that's my suggestion, but I'm just. Uh, one of three people. So would that make sense to you to sort of continue on uh, with Schedule A, pull out what we can and keep, you know, that's what we're going to keep. That's what we agree to and looking for common themes at the same time. I think the way you've put together the schedules is an effective way to explain the a final bylaw. You have the schedules are more logical and easier to understand than the 30 pages of, you know, expanding it. And I understand that your schedules are even saying like, if you want more detail, it's in the bylaw, but here's your actual premise and your breakdown. I'm fine with that. Understanding that we need to try to focus to refocus the conversation and get us going some, somewhere, mm -hmm. realizing that I put up a big giant roadblock to begin with. So I'm okay with going through your schedules and the way they're written to see if we can find that. I do like the way Councillor Allen has put it in terms of the um, principles. You know, mm -hmm. this is this is what we're trying to do, and we can find 
commonality there and there might be ones that we disagree with but at least we're kind of moving us forward mm -hmm. so um yeah okay thank you for that um councillor allen so what i've got so many documents open here what one are you referring to schedule a this oh is i from sent i sent I sent out for your consideration and then uh, Schedule A and Schedule B, which were uh, taken from the uh, Municipality of Meaford um, schedules for their signed by law. Schedule A was signs without permits or don't, that didn't require permits and Schedule B was for signs that required permits. Coordinator Van Alstine. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, Councillor Allen, I forwarded those to you or to the committee on Friday, if that helps. Yeah, so that's the one that you've highlighted in uh, green and yellow and red. Yeah, and, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. got that's it. That's right. Thanks. Yeah, and it's um, Schedule A, it's bolded there. Schedule A, no permit required. So the basic um, principles are these signs on this, on this uh, schedule are allowed on private property, property if you have landowner permission. They're not per permitted on or over municipal property or municipal right of ways unless otherwise indicated. And they're permitted in all designations unless otherwise indicated. So it's kind of what you're saying, Councillor Nielsen, they're it's just speaking to municipal property or where there might be a liability issue if something comes onto municipal property, they're allowed everywhere in all designations. And um, just saying it on private property, you would, you would have to have landowner permission. So uh, yeah, and then I, the color coding and everything is just um, for your benefit, Councillor Nielsen, I just highlighted in green the things that were decided at May the 10th, our last meeting. Um, this is from the original sign bylaw, but uh, things that are crossed out were things that were decided at Committee of the Whole. Things that are in, in red print were things that were decided at Committee of the Whole. And then Everything that's highlighted yellow is, in my opinion, a safety issue or a liability issue. Um, all the gray stuff is aesthetics, <laughs> if you want to call it that. And then um, when I looked through, all the nuisance items were setbacks. So for looking at um, the contractor renovation signs, they don't require a permit. They're allowed in all areas. And the regulations at this point all have to do with the size, the height. Um, yeah, just, so if we were to decide that we're only going to think about um, the safety I personally didn't see anything in that in those regulations that applied to safety and liability. So I, I guess disagree. Yeah. So what what we would end up saying on this particular sign is there's a definition there. It's permitted in all areas, and it doesn't require a permit. Yeah. Also, I'd like to just note the fact that there is a time limit mentioned, but it does say 12 months, so it's not restrictive. Mm -hmm. Right. You're saying, you know, during the course of a construction of a house, you can have your sign up. That's being that's displaying who the worker is. If you're getting your roof done and so on and so forth. Right. So I like the fact that there, there's the maximum there because then we can say we don't want it there forever. And then it would be classified as an abandoned sign if it's there for longer than that period. So are you suggesting, Councillor Nielsen, that we would leave in the part about uh, the duration? Yeah, that I'm that I'm liking the fact that the duration is 12 months. That it's not like 30 days, right? We have throughout our bylaw there was a lot of mentions where there was restrictive time limit, and I didn't understand the time limit. This one's 12 mm -hmm. months. What I'm saying is, the fact that you're saying there's a significant time period is fair. It's not restrictive. It's not hampering anybody, and there's no reason not to let it do that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so the question might be then, if we're talking about how long a sign can be on, that might be something that we could speak to generically, right? Yeah. I mean, because some signs are in, by their nature temporary and that if yeah. the sign wasn't removed after X number of times that it would be classified as an abandoned sign. Right, okay. Right. That's, Councillor Allen, any comment? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So um, we either leave in the 12 months for the, that sign or we include it in a more general term about how long right. the sign can be up. Right. Um, I've got election sign. We were going to have further discussion. My fear is that we were going to get bogged down in talking about election signs. And, you know, there's so many regulations already in place. Um, I would prefer to just move on from this and um, I don't think you're wrong. I think there are, in, in the municipal act, there are election sign rules, yeah. right? Especially yeah. when it comes to the duration of a sign, the period in which a sign is allowed to be erected. They all protect the municipality for the good. And I think if we try to get into the nitty gritty of those, it might be a waste of our time. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think our municipality, we had an election sign bylaw as well. So we could provide reference to, you know, to specifics with the Municipal Act and our own election sign by law. Any comment, Councillor Allen? No, I am. Um, yeah, I, I think the Municipal Act, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, I did notice down, I highlighted one thing under there, which was the only thing I could find that was really a safety issue, which was you can't place an election sign within a site triangle. So that, that comes up again and again. So that might be something we want to consider generically. You know that. So you're meaning on like turns, intersections, having a, a sign that does block your view from traffic from the other way, right? That's what you mean by your site yeah. triangles? Like, I know the county talks about site triangles and mm -hmm. yeah, I think we do too. It's part of the, part of planning. I don't know, Councillor <laughs> Allen, if you have a better definition of site triangles, but I, I definitely that's a safety concern. I think, yeah, the site triangle though, usually is municipal property. If it's county, they have mm -hmm. their, their site Try, well, I guess not always. They don't have them. They, they try to acquire them. So, um, yeah, within a site triangle or that obstructs a, a um, vehicle's view, mm -hmm. um, something like that. Yeah. I think with, it may have been even Mulmer, but some of, the, some of the other bylaws that I looked at had um, a whole list of things that you can't have a sign and one of them was site triangle. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's just like, it, I don't care what sign it is. It applies to all of them. You just can't, can't have a sign in certain um, locations where it's going to impede your, your, you know, ability to see. Um, okay. If we move on to federal, provincial. Oh, can I get you to shut the breaker off for the pump again? Sure. Pardon me for just two seconds to turn off a breaker, apparently. <laughs> Can we just take a two minute break? Sure. Chair little? Um, okay. Sorry, what time is it? Come back at 11.05. Is that okay? Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Councillor Nielsen, we're going to recess to 11.05.
Welcome back. So we're moving on to um, federal, provincial, and municipal signage. Uh, basically, they are allowed on municipal and um, property and right of ways. There's a definition there. And uh, we decided there would be no change at the last meeting. Incidental signs, um, no change. They're allowed in all designations according to this. And the only regulations around uh, incidental signage was the size. And I'm, I'm fine if uh, you don't want to include that. I think in this case, the, the definition of an incidental sign would warrant the size. You wouldn't be able to put up, because anything bigger than that would end up becoming a non-incidental sign. So you're saying keep the, keep the size that's there, 12 inches by 18 inches, so it's kind of like a business letter size. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Allen? Um, yeah, the only thing is it's saying a, a sign advertising a home-based business. And I believe in our bylaw, it does allow, it's perhaps a meter square mm -hmm. for a home base. So um, to have maximum height of 12 inches in there goes against our zoning bylaw. Sorry, say that the, oh, so to restrict it to a business letter size is contradictory to, so maybe our zoning. advertising a home-based business is not an inter, in, incidental sign. No. I would agree should, because an inter, incidental sign should be temporary in nature. Yeah incidental to another use, that's not a home business. Because I think when we were discussing, incidental signs are more your open sign, closed sign that you're gonna put on the patio, a sign advertising a sale or something on your A-frame signs would be considered mm -hmm. incidental, right? Right. Comment, Councillor Allen, should we just or take that sentence out of there. There's also the portable sign as well. Yeah, I think we need to pull that out and add it in um, to one of the other one of the other um, definitions. Okay, so Take out the sentence of the home based business. What about the portable sign? Oh, so a portable sign advertising that a business is open. Okay, so that's what you were saying, Councillor Nelson. We could leave that in there, right? Everybody okay with that? I'm just taking a look at the examples in the bylaw showing what they meant by the incidental sign. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's only like a drive through sign or, you know, what's for sale inside. So I would agree that a home based business sign wouldn't actually meet that definition. Okay. So that's given in the examples. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm, I did this myself with nobody checking it for me. So you want to check the definition and just make sure that I've copied it correctly. You did. It does say in the definition in the current bylaw that we had, well, the draft bylaw was that sign advertising a home business shall be considered an incidental sign. I'm wondering if the reason for that was to try to limit the size, but then Councillor Allen is saying that our zoning bylaw says it can be a meter square, which is significantly better than bigger than 18 by eight, 12 yeah. by 18 inches. Yeah. Councillor Allen, isn't the um, Niagara Scarpman, I seem to remember have, you know, there are signs like be, uh, bed and breakfast signs and things like that, that you might have around in the Niagara Scarpman plan area are one meter square. Does that ring a bell with you? Um, 
I I I don't know on okay. that. All right, so uh, we'll just take that sentence out then and then leave everything else as is. I think that works for the incidental sign. My only question is, do we want to have, will we need to define a home-based business signage? Because the only other place to me that would work or make sense to have your home-based business sign would be under ground sign except ground signs allow for a significantly larger sign. Maybe can we think about that as we go through yeah, fair. Uh, both schedules? Okay. I just have a couple of big question marks around that. Where do we include home-based signs, home-based business signs? So, so they're talking about a sign, I just pulled up the zoning bylaw, um, a legal sign no larger than one square meter. So it's definitely that's allowed. Okay. Um, okay. One square meter. Is there a way to have wording in, a, in the sign bylaw that would say like reference, specifically reference to the zoning bylaw? I guess yeah, you could... Cool. You yeah, oh, you yeah. could you could say it's allowed a certain size unless uh, otherwise outlined in our zoning bylaw, something like that. I'm just thinking it might be a good exercise to go through. Like I could do it, just do a search on the zoning bylaw and see where all the places you know where it's already referencing signs because we don't want to be in contradiction with. Yeah, I know we've had lots of conversations um, about the building code. I talked with our chief building officer. There is nothing in the building code specific to signage. What she was hoping to see in the sign bylaw was a line that said, installed by a licensed installer. Mm -hmm. Okay. As a, as, a, as a genetic principle, because right. there's no specific mentions in the building code, specifically to signage. And then what that allowed is she, she has said that in the past, because licensed installers are the ones putting up the large scale signage, they hand in the engineering drawings, the design scape of how they're attaching it. So that it meets the standards that she can understand this will mm. be safe given the protocols they've taken but there's nothing in the building code specifically to it. That's a really good suggestion. Okay, can we, can we move ahead? Um, internal signs. We decided there would be no change. The regulations actually do refer to the building, chief building official. Um, but it's really the, it says here, it's the onus of the landowner to, or the agent to um, contact the building department. Is that something that's on, that would be totally on private property, right? It would be inside their building, which is their private property. So it's up to them. The onus is on them. Yeah. So we would, we would leave that, we would leave that in there. Well, my question is, is that needed because the onus is on them? Like, I don't understand why the clause is there. If there's, like, it's if I put a sign up on the interior of my building, any any onus on anything I do inside my building has on, is on myself to make sure it's done properly, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're doing electrical work or plumbing work, your onus is to make sure it's done properly, not going to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. So why do we have that clause? It would just be that internal signs are allowed everywhere in every mm -hmm. designation because it's not it's internal to the building and nothing to do with the municipality. Right. It's Councilor Allen. Yeah, actually, it, the internal sign is on the property, but not viewed from the road. An interior sign is one that's on the interior of the building. So they're they're similar in the definition in that they're not meant for traffic to view. It's it's maybe on a large piece of property like Maxwell Stone, a sign partway back saying, you know, 
the boulders this way and that type of thing. So uh, I'm I'm in agreement that that's that's up to the the owner of the property to make sure that they're safe and if they need a permit for them. That for this sign, it's actually included in the definition as well. Um, certain internal signs may require a permit pursuant to the Building Code Act. Determination be made by the CBO onus is on the landowner. We just leave that in the definition, but we don't need to include it as a regulation, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, interior sign, no change. Um, I'm saying that the regulate, what's included there as a regulation is really just um, the same as what the definition is. So we probably don't need that there either. Correct? I would think so because that would mean other than in, in definitions, the interior sign is labeled in definitions. It would just say that it's allowed everywhere. You wouldn't have to have a separate section explaining what an interior sign is because it's already defined. All right. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to keep track here of what we've decided. Okay, so moving on then to portable signs. Um, Commonly referred to as sandwich boards or A-frame signs. Um, sign displaying that a business is open shall not be considered a portable sign. Isn't that in contradiction to what was up above? I think we're saying that because an incidental sign is yeah, a portable sign advertising a business is open shall be considered an incidental sign. I, in other words, there's no permitting, there's no nothing, there's no restrictions yeah. on it. Whereas the portable sign itself has some more restrictions to it. Okay. Um, so highlighted there is just the part about protruding onto a public sidewalk or a public boulevard of more than half a meter from the facade of the building. Um, shall not interfere with the safe plowing or removal of snow. Um, temporarily affixed to the facade of the building to prevent its movement. And then the, the whole section about indemnification and insurance. So let's talk about those first, unless there's other, other clauses there that are about safety as well. Those are the ones I thought were strictly pertaining to safety. I don't disagree with you. The ones that you've highlighted in yellow are the main safety ones. Would you leave those in then, Councillor Nielsen? Yes. Okay. Um, now, what about one portable sign per business and well, all the other ones? One per business and the size. Um, I think the one portable sign per business can be classified, pardon me, sorry, I'm coughing a little, um, almost as a safety thing because the portable signs are out front of the building. If you had multiple ones, then there could be some more safety concerns. So I think that that one is fine. Okay. Things like the signs shouldn't be illuminated, right? There, there's portable signs that are, the writing is illuminated the writing on them. I don't understand why that would be in there. So that, those are the parts where I push back because it's not a safety thing. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why why it's there. A question for the two of you is the premise that a portable sign should only be erected if their merchant or business does not display any merchandise on the sidewalk. Is that a safety point because 
if a business that puts a lot of merchandise on the sidewalk and then tries to have a portable sign advertising a sale, you're kind of cluttering up the sidewalk mm -hmm. and then you're going to have a safety problem. So mm -hmm. I'd almost classify that as a safety issue too, because you have merchandise out there that's already protruding from the build, from the facade, then putting a sign is another obstacle. So that one, I would be okay with being included as well, saying that it's, we're saying this because of safety. We're saying we don't want the sidewalk being completely overrun by your store. I would agree. And that in that context, the liability and stuff um, be, comes in because we're saying if you're putting merchandise on our sidewalk, it's the same from, to, in my eyes, be the same as putting a sign there. If you're putting merchandise on the sidewalk, we want to make sure that you're doing it safely. You're not having materials that can be blown away in the wind. You're not having materials that are, you know, unsafe to have and on display that could be All right. taken out. Same with the portable sign, right? Yep. Comments, Councillor Allen? Yes, thank you. The, the definition, a sign solely displaying that a business is open shall not be considered a portable sign. So yeah, that's okay. But when it says about shall not protrude onto a public sidewalk or, or sorry, yeah, sidewalk or boulevard more than 0.5 meters from the facade of the building, uh, and, and then there's another spot where it says it should be temporarily affixed to the facade to prevent movement. I'm thinking of signs downtown Flesherton that aren't specifically saying open, but are advertising the businesses. And they are on the outside of the sidewalk because that's where people don't walk because there's sign posts and things like that. So by saying this, those signs would have to be moved against the building and attached, mm -hmm. which to me will cause more problems than where they are now. So it's, I know it's hard to, one size doesn't fit all, but um, I think I put the same in Markdale, where we have the light standards in the sidewalk on Main Street, that's where people put the signs because people aren't walking there. So mm -hmm. I'm a little concerned with that, um, right. that it be affixed and the distance from the facade. Would a better definition be the 0.5 meters from the roadway? Or in a, in, a manner, in a manner not to obstruct pedestrian traffic or snow plowing or something like that right we'll give chair the chair a second come back there Sorry. <laughs> that's fair i had to do the same thing <laughs> so what we're saying chair is that if we had it saying 0.5 meters from the roadway or in a manner that was not obstructing the sidewalk the pedestrian traffic is the way councillor allen put it 0.5 meters from the roadway yeah, so rather than saying 0.5 meters from the building, we more want it 0.5 meters from the roadway so that's not going to fall into the traffic. Right. But, and, and in a manner that would not obstruct pedestrian traffic on the sidewalk. Because I think the way Councillor Allen put it, which I think would be a very right. legal way of, of wording it. Okay. That sounds good. Um, what about, I suppose the idea of affixing it to the facade of the building, well, to prevent its movement. So would you have to sandbag it or do something that would maybe keep it from blowing? I mean, if it's so close to the road, it could blow into the road. Mm -hmm. There would need to be perhaps, a way. Perhaps the same type of wording uh, um, secured in a manner that prevents its movement or something like that. Right. Now, Councillor Allen and, and Chair Little, you are both more experienced with the planning aspect than myself, um, and maybe even more experienced with the 0.5 meters. 0.5 meters is like a foot and a half, just under two feet. 
So yeah. is that far enough from the roadway? I only used said the 0.5 meters because that's what was written from the thing. You're two feet away from the roadway, which is that should be enough to not cause a problem with traffic or with snow plowing, right? Or where doors opening, that's the issue. Car doors opening. Right. right. So that should be far enough back, right? I'm just making, or do we want to say like 0. 0.6 meters or 0. 0.8 meters? That was more my question. Like, is, is the 0. 0.5 from the roadway far enough? Uh, again, maybe we don't say a, a distance. We just say... Um, the not impeding. Yeah. Um, pedest or not pedestrian, but... Um, what what would the word be for for people getting in and out of uh, cars? Ingress and egress. <laughs> sure, something like that. I think we'll leave that wording to the to uh, <laughs> Director Benner. That's good. I mean, we could we could find it, uh, examples too, probably in other other bylaws, how they've addressed this. Um, there was the part about 21 days, up to 21 days concurrently. Um, I'm assuming that um, we're going to take that out or leave it out. I would take it out because the nature of a portable sign is that it is brought in and put back out on a, on a business day basis. So it's not like we have a hazard where we're seeing the A-frame sign style signs left on the sidewalk indefinitely. Every business mm -hmm. pulls them in and I would think moreover, if they didn't, then they might not own that portable sign anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it would magically disappear in the middle of the night. So I don't think that clause is necessary. And I also, when it comes to the 21 days concurrently is the, because it's moving every single day, it's not really a concurrency, right? Like you're leaving it out because of your, your shop's open or you have a sale for that day or the chalkboard out there saying whatever fun sign you're trying to just, just say, but then you're bringing it back in. So it's never out there concurrently. Um, I'm wondering about the um, clause about the size of the sign, um, just given the, you know, the, the size of the sidewalk, the fact that we're not wanting to impede with pedestrians, we're not wanting to impede getting in and out of vehicles, that perhaps there should be a restriction on the size of the sandwich board. I don't disagree. It hurts, but I don't disagree. <laughs> there are like, that's the thing. There are times when res some restrictions make sense. There's logic to them. Then there's ones where I can't see the logic to it. That frustrates right. me. This instance, we're saying, we don't want a three foot sign taking up the sidewalk and you saying, well, that's just a portable sign. I, look, I take it in every day. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the the last thing that was added at committee of the whole was the two clauses about, um, or sorry, it was one clause where a certificate of insurance, and this occurs in a few places. So signed indemnification. Would that be oh. one of our larger principles? that would be premised at the beginning of the bylaw that says, if you are putting something on municipal property, right away, sidewalks, you are required to have this. Again, mm -hmm. that's one that I, I fought against the, at the community whole level because it frustrates me that it's necessary, but I understand that it's necessary. Okay. This is the risk and liability features to a municipality. Okay. And the amount, I, I remember you saying, Councillor Nielsen, at our committee of the whole meetings about the amount seeming to be excessive, but that's kind of standard. Either $2 million or $5 million is pretty standard, isn't it? Yeah, again, frustrating, but I understand it. And, and I think in, in, in reality, it's not like it's a, your, your regular business insurance should be able to cover this without a, a significant increase to your business insurance. If you're, as any business you need to have a business insurance to operate. So 
you know, you're having your insurance say, let your insurance provider know, I'm putting a, a sign out here and I need to have this liability coverages with it as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of sad that, you know, years ago, if you tripped over something on the sidewalk, you'd quickly get up and hope nobody saw. And <laughs> now the mentality is you lay there and hope somebody does see you so that you can sue everybody inside. <laughs> That's so, the frustrating part of it. Yeah. So I think we definitely need that, uh, that in there. I made a stupid mistake snowshoeing one time and I'm, I was having difficulty even getting up and I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, I hope nobody sees me. And then I'm like, what if I can't get up? I hope somebody sees me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so would we strike that out of that section then that, uh, because that clause we're, we're considering including it as a broader principle. I think that would be fair because I do believe that that's the, like, that's the point where we're here for that reason, that liability yeah. and risk. I think that makes sense. And that it would be a guiding principle at the beginning of the, of the document. Right. Because fundamentally then any sign that lands on our property needs to have that wording. Right. That's the objective, right? Yeah. Would you agree, Councillor Allen? I I do. Ab absolutely, because we know human nature. If you have to get indemnification for a sandwich board on the sidewalk, but it doesn't specifically say you need to do that for some other type of sign, people will be propping a sign up against the building or doing whatever mm -hmm. to get around that. So mm -hmm. if it says right at the beginning that if it's on municipal property, this is what you need to do, then it, it covers everything. Good. All right, can we move on then to real estate signs? So they are temporary sign, they are permitted everywhere. And there's no, um, no safety element as far as I could tell. It's more about the size and how long a sign can be up. So the only one I have issue of in terms of the wording in here is where it goes, signs in the king and open house may be erected on the property to be displayed for a period not exceeding 48 consecutive hours. So you're saying your open house sign can only be up for two days. And I don't understand that restriction because, you know, as a person you're trying to advertise. So I would think like a week would make more sense because you're trying to get the eyes as the drive by traffic, having that level of restriction, I don't think, think is necessary. So um... it's the very last line in the, in the course of it. Not uh, maybe erected, not to exceed 48 hours. So you're saying a week instead of that? Yeah, for your open house signs, right? Open house, okay. It's specifically talking about an open house sign, not right. an actual for sale sign. For sale sign would be up until the building is sold and then must be removed within 30 days after the sale. So that line makes sense because that's identifying when it would be considered abandoned. We're saying if it's less, if it's longer than 30 days, that's an abandoned sign and we're going to remove it and we're going to penalize you for it if you don't do it yourself. Okay. Right. Whereas yeah. the other line is just saying you got 48 hours to have an open house sign. Doesn't make sense. If we can at least say seven, that would make more sense. Mm -hmm. Cause I would just think outside of that, there's not that much forethought and planning. You're not going to have an open house sign indefinitely because the real estate agent isn't going to be there indefinitely kind of thing. Okay. Councillor Allen. Um, I agree a week prior to the open house. Maybe we want to add that it's removed at the end of the open house, something along that line, but sometimes they do leave signs up just to get um, advertising and, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. phones about that one. And, but then talks, looks at others. So, yeah. So you could say, removed within 24 hours of the open house or at the conclusion at the the conclusion yeah now there's something about how many signs you can have for the frontage and the size of the sign i think that's standard practices for the real estate 
market, the real estate agents. So I wouldn't argue those. When I looked it up, the, the average is these principles for real estate science in terms of traditional sizing and such that the real estate agents are using. Does it need to be stipulated? Um, like, should it be in there and that's because that's what they're already doing or does it not to be in there because they're already doing what they're doing? I would lean towards unnecessary because that's what they're doing. So it's, I'm not, a, I'm not against the limitations. It's just kind of the standard anyways. Mm -hmm. Councillor Allen, what are your thoughts there? I agree. I don't think I've seen any or much abuse of, you know, on a larger piece of property. They maybe put two or three just to get your attention, but it's um, on a where it's really going to count in a residential area. It's unless it's a corner lot, it's only one sign. Yeah, I'm fine with taking that out. Take it out. The other there's no harm in leaving it in. I think then I it comes it to, yeah, because the, the, the other thing for the properties, you look at our rural properties that have a larger frontage. One of the reasons for the multiple signs is to help deviate where the property line ends. Frequently, you see them on farm mm -hmm. properties where you'll see three or four signs because it has one at the driveway and then one at either end of the property. And if it's an even larger frontage, you're going to have a fourth or fifth one in there because they're trying to say, this is where that property ends. Oh, wow. That's still this property. That's crazy, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so basically we've struck that whole thing out, except that we're saying that the uh, open house sign can be up for one week and has to be removed at the end of the, at the conclusion of the open house, correct? We should also keep the line that says such sh signs shall be removed within 30 days after the sale or leasing of the property, because that's giving definition as to when we would then consider an, an abandoned sign. Okay. So the last two sentences of that line. Shall be removed within 30 days after the sale or leasing of the property. Okay. Um, temporary signs basically is just a, the definition. There weren't any real regulations around temporary signs. Yeah. Any comments there? The only thought in my head, ironically, coming from the guy who's very anti putting anything in here, <laughs> is that I'm, I'm partially thinking having timelines <clears throat> allow us for a definition of when it would, we would consider it abandoned. So for instance, the, the prevalence of like a lost dog poster is a temporary sign. It's being affixed to, you know, a message and then a limited time and relates to the use of building property for which is located for the purposes. Isn't this, no, that, those are considered incidental. Sorry, hang on. I'm, I'm thinking outside my own box. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what a temporary sign is. Yeah. I know there's a definition there, but why, why is it temporary? Why, so again, if people can put up a sign, um, without worrying about any rules, then, well, that's a temporary sign it says in your bylaw. There's a co commercial sign. It does say it's a commercial sign, but it doesn't give visual examples in the bylaw like some of the other ones. That's what I was just trying to look up. So we just need a better definition? I think so. Okay. A message applicable for definite, definable, definable and specific limited time and relates to the use of the building property on which is located.
we have incidental signs, we have portable signs, we have other signs that are defined in here that would be temporary in nature, given the, the nature of those specific signs. I think, and because you the only thing I can think about this temporary sign is if you had a poster on the exterior of your building, but we have poster signs defined. Mm -hmm. And I think Maybe. if the three of us can't picture what a temporary sign is, perhaps it's a very bad definition and should be removed. Or just examples. All right. Um, let's think about how that's defined then. Come back to that. Uh, window signs. Sign within a building affixed or located within six meters of the inside of a window in view of the general public. Um, and the only, this is the one place in this per, uh, signs without permits where it's, it's not allowed in residential areas. And the, you know, the regulations don't seem to have anything to do with safety as far as I can tell. I question this one because I think about, you know, like in a residential area where you might have neighborhood watch or something like that, you know, or. Um, I'm trying to think of why it wouldn't be allowed. Like, yeah. I'm also trying to think of examples. So neighborhood watch is a good one. People would put beware of dog in their window mm -hmm. to let people know if you're coming to my property, I have a dog here. No soliciting. No soliciting is another one. Yeah. People that um, do sewing or anything like that sometimes will just put a little thing in the window that people can see. I think when we're trying to move to mixed use, you know, and there's a lot of home business something like you're saying, Councillor Allen, where you're offering a service, you know, like, like sewing or alterations or whatever, or small engine repair, I don't know. Um, so I would strike B from this regulation. Right. Do you agree, Councillor Allen? Uh, I do. It's, it's kind of um, comparing um, wind turbines with, um, with solar panels that the wind turbine you see for miles and miles as you drive by or coming up to it, solar panel, you see it for a second as you drive by and then it's gone. So a window sign, yes, if you're driving by the house and you look in, you see it, but it's not offending anybody uh, looking down the road or out from their windows trying to see a view of you know the street or something like that so mm -hmm. um, yeah I do agree okay we had struck out at committee of the whole the part about 25 percent of the window or more than 15 percent of the total facade of the building we had removed that um, The reason being like, so you can have a window sign as a way of blocking the view of the backside of a shelving, right? To, to, right. to kind of prevent an unsightly sight from the window into yeah. the build business. Cause I have, oh, I need more shelving space. I put up in front of the window rather than looking at the back of my box. Here's a window sign that's going to help right. have more, you know, okay. aesthetic. We struck B, we struck C. Um, what about A? I don't really understand A. <laughs> Nothing to prevent the installation or display of any sign or advertising device within the window opening uh, as long as it's in compliance with the definition. So I don't even see the need for the clause A. I would agree because the, the only thing that's trying to say is that the, the definition says located within 0.6 meters of the inside of a window in the view of the general public. Yeah. Strike it. 
Councillor Allen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then the thing about time and temperature display. So I'm guessing that's like an open sign that has that underneath it. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have an open sign in your window uh, for a business that also displays the time and temperature or, or yeah. such. I don't, I don't see the need for that either. I won't disagree with you. <laughs> <Whoa -hoo. laughs> <laughs> okay. And then yard sale. Uh, let's see. So my only issue on that one again is the 48 hours. Yeah. So we just had a long weekend. Yeah. So, so if we can put up. The same as like a, the open house sign. I, I would think because you could put a yard sale sign that would say this weekend yeah. and trying to give notice. Right. Right. So but then so go ahead. No, I was just wondering if we could use the same wording we use for the real estate sign, open house sign. Yeah. And then removed at the end of the yard sale. Yeah. So that there is a definition as to what it needs to be taken down. I don't disagree either with this, with a statement that each sign shall indicate the date and location of the sale because you can use yard sale signs as wayfinding as well, right? Like you'll have a sign on highway 10 that says yard sale this way, mm -hmm. you, you know, we'll frequently say the um, direction or might say even the address on it so people can find it. And then they'll, you'll find more wayfinding to, to try to find the location of the yard sale. Um, so I'm, I understand that. And I think that that's okay to be putting in there because it helps to when it would, what it would do is it would help us identify yard sale signs that have been abandoned. Right. Right. So if it's past the date that you say your sign is up there, well, then our roads crew guys have full rights to just go and remove it and throw it out. Okay. Um, the thing in there about sight triangles, I, I'm thinking that could be generic. Again, yeah. yeah, I was just scrolling through looking at some of the others. We didn't include that on the real estate sign, so yes, I think oh. that should be at the beginning. Yeah, and no sign shall be um, erected in sight triangles, right? Yeah, I would just think that we need to make sure that the definition of side triangles is a way that people can understand what it is, just yeah. because by saying side triangles the average person probably isn't going to have a clue what we're talking about. Yeah. Right. So we need to provide side triangles as a definition and definitions or something. The size of the sign, then that's the only thing we haven't talked about. Point we're, four we're square at, meters. Pretty big. 0 0.4 square meters. That's not very big. Zero, yeah. yeah. What is that? Huh. That's very small. Yeah. I think we should allow the real estate size. Yeah. Depends Didn't we end up taking out all the real estate definition size though? Have, have yes. either yeah. of you witnessed a obscenely large yard sale sign? I haven't. No, I think it's about more where, where do they put them though? Like often yeah. they're on a post or something, which I don't think we're <laughs> permitting. Or it's also the way they're being set up. They're, they're, sometimes the size is beneficial. So if you want the, the lettering to be in a, as a such that it's easy to read so that the person who's driving isn't squinting, isn't meandering, isn't distracted by trying to read a smaller sign. Allowing mm -hmm. for a larger sign means allowing for larger lettering so that people can read it easier. That's true. Right. Should we remove that? Uh, I think provision? we, I think we could remove the size provision because I can't in my head picture anybody who's going to the an obscene scale where you're putting up a yard sale sign on a sheet of plywood on a municipal roadway trying to indicate which direction the yard sale sign is. I don't think that's, that seems counterproductive. 
You know, mm-hmm. you're trying to make some money selling some of your stuff and you're going to ruin a full sheet of plywood by saying yard sale sign. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, so we've uh, completed schedule A. Um, how was that process? Was that working for you? I think it allowed us to focus in onto what the actual risk and liabilities are and helped us to define some of the larger principles we we should have so that there isn't, um, you know, people trying to take advantage of a a way out because oh, legally you didn't say this on this particular sign. Mm -hmm. And, And that's what I was trying to say in the beginning that, you know, a more generic policy makes sense. So I think that was beneficial and productive. Okay. So um, what I, uh, what I think based on that is that um, when we meet again, we should go through the uh, schedule B where permit is required right now anyway. Um, follow the same process, pull out the generic principles as much as we can. Um, what I'm suggesting is that we do some homework, like do our work before we get here so that we already know what our opinion is, what should be struck out, what should we leave in. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe some thought about how we're going to build those generic principles, you know, what's going to be included, what you're saying about, you know, what is a site triangle. Um, yeah, that's, I think if we, we approach this uh, chart in the same way that we've just done and be prepared for next time, it should be, should go a little bit more smoothly because when you get right down to it, you know, um, each of us, you know, Councillor Allen's kind of in the middle, but each of us, uh, Councillor Nielsen and I, you know, we do have some latitude, right? So yeah. it's not, it, it's not impossible <laughs> to find common ground so i think you know it's um it's a good process that way and you know ultimately we want we're trying to find consensus so um and i and i think we can do that with the people here i don't disagree i appreciate the conversation we've had at the beginning of today councillor little and i know um i feel like we've we've got a momentum to move forward now so Okay, um, I don't know that there's, there's not that much time left to get, you know, to start in on something new. I would maybe think about the overall um, structure, organization, I suppose, of the bylaw. If we go with these schedules, which would just like not have all the information that's here, but, um, or it could even be the definitions and then what the regulations are and then refer to section whatever that gives more detail, I don't know. But think about maybe the organization, what's going to make sense to the public, you know, what's going to be the most clear thing to understand, Um, basically, the scope, um, the properties we're looking at, you know, municipal or affecting or public space. Um, Yeah, does that sound? The way the schedules are written, it's almost, we can put the information there and almost not need the further drilling down because your information is there and it's presented in an in an easier format to follow by having it in the schedule by having it in your table format rather than having it by you know your paragraph format i, I feel mm-hmm. like it's easier to understand it's easier to get to and and under and follow um rather than and i also think it'll end up being um, more condensed than the the volume that was provided before, and I think mm-hmm. that's when you look at trying to get somebody to be on board with regulations, presenting them with a, a you know a large volume is a deterrent in and of itself. I feel like, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, we have wonderful six hundred page reports that come to council. I'm sure us as councilor members are reading them, but I would doubt anybody from the public is going to sit there and read through a 600 page report because they're going to look at their report and go, never mind, I'm, I'm not interested. Right. So having it be 
a smaller format it makes it more digestible and more likely people will actually okay I'm, i'll take the time and read it and go through it rather than just guessing and then looking yeah, for forgiveness thing, rather than permission right one thing i liked about and it might have been more um uh, oh we do have some time counselor nielsen did you want to did you want to talk about the momer bylaw and what you liked about it or if so if we're trying to end this this meeting so we can have a fresh meeting and adjourn we can try and do that we have a couple minutes the premise of why i wanted to have it on here was that to me, the Malmer bylaw represents what the municipality needs to protect itself mm -hmm. and didn't represent the wants of some members of the community or some members of council that are wanting more regulations. Mm -hmm. And that was what was driving me nuts, right? That's where I kept getting frustrated and, and felt like I was hitting a wall was because there is a need and there is wants and then Malmer represents the need for the municipality to protect itself pretty clearly. And I like the fact that it was very simple to say on our lands, you have to have permission. These are what's permitted anywhere. These are what's not permitted on our lands. This is what we're gonna do and, and, and to protect ourselves. And so that just the simplicity of it mm -hmm. worked for what I was trying to get across to council with what was the difference between the 43 page regulations and a seven page example of this is what we have to have to protect ourselves. All right. Okay. Um, so as well as thinking ahead to the schedule B signs, which will be a little bit more challenging, but I have faith in us. Um, we could be thinking about what, um, what needs to be included in the bylaw itself. I think there's a lot of kind of legalese that um, something about enforcement and penalties for sure. Um, anything that we can include generically, maybe give some thought to that as well. I think the other thing when it comes to the signs is by having it be more understandable, by having the bylaw be more digestible, there won't be, for one, an excessive amount of people coming and trying to ask for leniency on the rules, which will limit, I don't wanna use the term red tape because it seems very politically charged at the moment <laughs> with, with, with the election going on, but it's trying to make it so that there's not unnecessary restrictions on people just trying to advertise a business or trying to advertise a service that exists mm -hmm. and that we can have it be more simplified and in turn that will make things easier on our staff and on council by not having it you know every week every council agenda there's a new person trying to come by and saying you guys have these restrictions well i'm trying to do this right mm -hmm. Yeah, the um, preamble to the Mulmer bylaw, the very last clause I like. Um, Whereas council wishes to achieve balance between the need for advertising of local businesses or events with the safety of the traveling public. And they also include the desire to preserve the visual attractiveness of the municipality. But we've kind of agreed that we're not going to but I think, you know, if, if we're talking about municipal roadways and road allowances, by preventing excessive signage on our lands, which is our right, we should be allowed as a municipality to say, we don't want all these signage on our lands and our properties. That does protect that rural landscape because mm -hmm. not every farmer is going to allow a billboard to be placed on their lands because it interferes with the farming operations. It does... It's the same with saying the billboard thing. Not every building owner wants to have a billboard on the side of their building or a mural on the side. A lot of people don't like, I don't want to wreck my building. I don't want to touch my building. So by saying things like our lands, protecting our lands, that is your main visual when you're driving through a community. You're on the roadways, you're viewing the road allowances. You're not going to have the clutter and the nuisance of multiple signage if we're protecting our lands from being overly exploited. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Okay, I'm glad that makes makes sense. Um, Councillor Allen, did you have any final comments or are you okay with the process that we're looking to follow at the next meeting? Yes, and I agree that what we just did was the easy part. <laughs> <laughs> the permitted signs will be a little tougher. I'm just looking through them and I think there's some signs like a poster sign that you know, I'm wondering why we need a permit. So there's some in here that we probably will pull out of this one and put in the other group. Okay. Right. right. Uh, and then uh, what was my other comment? And I maybe won't be able to remember. Yeah, I think that was the main thing. So yes, there's a lot of information here. I think if we do our homework and have, you know, our, our maybe not minds made up, but but which way yeah. we're leaning so mm -hmm. that um, it, it does go a little smoother and, and, and quicker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay. Or coordinator Van Alstein, she's looking for a motion to receive the MOMER bylaw for information. Oh. We're also not done necessarily our conversation on the draft one, but we can move forward because it could just be a net returning item on the agenda. So, yeah. Yeah. Motion to All right, so, receive uh, information. Yeah. Okay, Councillor Nielsen moves to receive the MOMER bylaw for information, seconded by Councillor Allen. All in favor? That's carried. And um, if you're ready now, we can uh, move to recess. It'd be a motion to adjourn, right? We can close this no. meeting and then the, no? No. Okay. We're still, we're still discussing the bylaw. Right. Yeah. Councillor coordinator. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I would suggest, Chair Little, that we actually do adjourn this meeting so that we can change the agenda for the next meeting to add Schedule A and B on there as the discussion okay. items so that those are public items. Okay. Um, we will still continue the discussion, but I think that way I can add um, those items to the next agenda. That's good, too. And then you can incorporate the changes that we discussed today. Is that true? Into the into the bio, into Schedule A that we... Um, decided? Um, I have kept track of those changes. Uh, I'm just not 100% sure how to how to showcase those. So right. I will get back to you on that. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks for that. Um, is there anything else? So I need a, a motion to read oh, before we recess. Thank you, everybody. Thanks very much for your um, it's, it's not as painful as you think it, it's <laughs> going to be or maybe. I think, I, I really do think that we can, can do this together. So I'm uh, open to working and I know I, I feel like I psyched myself up because I was trying to figure out in my own head how to solve everything. And then I'm also trying to figure out how to, what the responses I'm expecting and stuff. And you can build something up beyond what it actually is. I think we can mm -hmm. work through this. I think mm -hmm. that it's just, Having good communication between the three of us is helping. <laughs> yeah. My challenge is I, just contextualizing it all, right? Like just trying to get the big picture and it's it's hard. Sorry, Councillor Allen. Well, I was just going to say, I, I, I was feeling the same way. I was thinking, I don't know how we're going to get through this. It, this is just too much. And, you know, so, but but I'm I'm uh, pleased with, with what we got done today and, Hopefully next meeting, we don't have a 45 minute discussion on, on what we're going to be doing. We can just get right into the, uh, the uh, second schedule, Schedule B. So. Right. so I'll make a motion to adjourn till the next meeting. <clears throat> okay, moved by Councillor Allen that we adjourn at 12.04, seconded by Councillor Nielsen, all in favor. That's carried. Thank you guys. Thank you.